Hello everybody and welcome back to Thomas Reacts here on the 360 Experience with myself Thomas Mabaso. So guys, the man that you are seeing on your screen right now, his name is Floyd Shivambu. He is the Deputy President of the Economic Freedom Fighters and a long-standing member of the Economic Freedom Fighters. So Mr. Shivambu recently was in Parliament and he was talking with the ANC Parliament and asking them the questions that a lot of people want to know the answers for and he was actually grilling the ANC Parliament and, and actually showing them how hypocritical they are about some of the issues and or some of the stances that they take when they deal with other issues. So Floyd Shivambu was in parliament and he was talking about the Palapala, he was talking about the Russia and he was also talking about the load shedding. Guys, this is one video that you don't want to miss. This is one of the best videos that you will ever see this year. So guys, I hope that you stay with me so that we can go through this video together. Stay with me and let's enjoy. Now, thank you very much, uh, Chair of Chess. Chair of Chess. Uh, so, National Chair of the EFF, I, I was saying to you now that I find it very difficult to find anything coherent said by the Chief of the Majority Party. I guess it's a largely a reflection of a generation of the Congress, which majority of them are not clear in terms of articulating anything. So let's then deal with uh, certain issues. <laughs> and maybe so that because children watch this parliament, let's deal with the conceptual issues quickly about the organization of African unity and the African Union. So despite the fact that we're celebrating the 60th anniversary of the OAU, its founding principles were problematic because it was about cooperation instead of integration of the African continent. Against the advice of Ahmed Ben Bella, against the advice of Kwame Nkrumah, against the advice of Sokoto, against the advice of Imperial Haile Salas. And we are still suffering as the African continent because we did not pursue the integration route. We took the cooperation route in terms of how we get to collectively develop the African economy. I think that settles this issue of whether there is common funding principles of the OEU and the African Union. We still should purposefully pursue integration of the entire African continent with one army, one currency, one central bank, and a common infrastructure that is going to interconnect the entire continent. That is what we should deal with. I just thought that uh, maybe from an instructive point of view, we should educate uh, the former treasurer of uh, the Congress city. So guys, the whole, I, I know a lot of people have been talking about this thing of Africa becoming one, one Africa, one currency, one government. Do you actually think that the, the, this whole thing will be possible? Do you think that we'll ever get to see Africa becoming one? Because right now in Africa, we are so divided and we are so divided by many issues. I mean, culturally, religiously, even the way that we live. I mean, like if you look at countries like South Africa, countries like Nigeria, we have adopted the modern way of living. We have actually adopted everything that the West is doing. And other African countries that are still traditional in their ways. I mean, like if we have, if Africa has to become one, we'll have to come up with an agreement on some issues. I mean, like issues like the issue of the LGBTQI we see right now is the burning issue as the America continues to push for the as America continues to push for this issue of the of, of the LGBTQI community, but in Africa we see a lot of countries they are resisting. Even some countries are 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 are, are banning these issues. They are they are, they are taking drastic measures. We we've, we've we've seen countries like Uganda, where people who who are who who are members of the LGBTQ, if you you identify as gay or something, you can spend years in jail. I mean, we've seen even countries like Ghana. Even right now, Kenya is talking about implementing the same rules. So, if Africa has to be one, there are a lot of issues that we'll have to iron out. So, do you do you honestly think that will ever come to a point? 
where in Africa we are one, where we, there is one one continent, one president, one currency. Like, how will this work? Do you, do you actually believe that it will happen in this lifetime at least? Then the issue that we want to take this opportunity to once again send our best wishes to the councillors of the EFF who have been now joining government in the metropolitan municipalities of the Johannesburg, of Etequini, of Nelson Mandela Bay, of Ekurulini, the city of Ekurulini, and of course those that have just been confirmed in the district municipalities of Mukhale City and the Western District. But since their occupation of office, they've thus far demonstrated that them. I mean, guys, if, if you have to think about Africa, man, Africa is so divided right now. Even right now, we can't even agree on the issue of borders. We can't. We can't even agree on the issue of borders. So some African countries, they, don't, they, they, are, they are opposed to this whole issue. Of, of of having borders in africa but there are other countries that are pushing for 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 having borders in africa i mean like even if you can look right now in south africa due to the fact of due to this issue of illegal foreigners man a lot of people they are pushing for this hard hard, hard borders and they want borders to be controlled very hard but if you look at other countries they are talking like i mean like in europe they, there's no borders a lot of countries in europe they don't have borders some countries they want africa to be like that but if you see in africa the movement that, that has been happening in africa i don't think i don't think even allowing africa not to have borders it will be such an easy issue as much as i would like it so that the the the, the it can it can improve the trade there can be a, a lot of improvement when it comes to trade and everything but there are a lot of issues that are happening right now i mean like if you are in south africa you have to be worried about the illegal immigrants and and what they are doing right now and wonder what will happen if the borders are open i mean like w w w will opening the borders in africa be a good thing or will it be a bad thing as much as I would like to see it happening, but I don't know how it will be a good thing because right now in, in South Africa, we are dealing with a lot of issues, especially from people who come into this country without papers. They are, also give, they are already giving us a lot of issues. And South Africans are so frustrated to a point that they can't even distinguish between a legal and an illegal foreigner in their countries. A lot of people just want this whole illegal, this whole foreigners thing to be get rid of. So... Do you, do you believe that this whole one Africa thing will happen, man? This whole idea of one Africa. Do you honestly believe that it will happen? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. We are a government in waiting. We are government now. We are in charge of your lives in many parts. Majority of you stay in cities which are governed and overseen by the economic freedom fighters. We have successfully reduced the former liberation movement into a rural party. <laughs> when we are in control of strategic <laughs> sectors of the economy, in terms of uh, what happens. And that is what we do, we excel in that. We reduce you first into a rural party, and next day we are going to completely take you out. When we defeat you in the upcoming uh, elections were encouraged by the young people in universities and universities of technology to the members in the house that while interjections are allowed not ongoing commentary is allowed <laughs> I need to just observe the room, please please proceed chair please don't protect me i'm fine you so said we're applying the rules i'm applying the rules on the member Please proceed. Please, please Typically, SA Parliament. I mean, like, guys, if you watch Parliament, <laughs> if you watch SA Parliament, man, what happens there, man? It's a joke, man. It's a joke what happens in Parliament because these are the guys that we've elected to go out there and represent us, and they get in Parliament and they start playing games and throwing tantrums and doing everything. I mean, like you can see, if the if the DA and the ANC or the EFF, if there's an issue that these parties don't agree with, man, nothing works in that parliament. 
and sometimes when i watch parliament do i do i ask i ask myself like like are we really getting our worth because when you watch parliament as, 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 as an ordinary person in the country like you just want to see people passing legislators you just want to hear the people that you've elected debating there talking about the issues that are really affecting the country but every time there's a parliament man yeah, man the things that are happening in parliament it's a joke man it's a joke and in parliament it's one time where we can get to see a lot of people that we've elected into power come into one place So I wonder will 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 our parliament ever get better man will we, will we, will we ever get to a place where we see things working in parliament will we, will we ever get to a point where we see people debating like adults in parliament aren't you tired of seeing people de- acting like kids in parliament aren't you tired man i'm tired the country right now is in trouble a, a lot of things are happening right now in the country we don't we, we don't deserve all these things that are happening in the in parliament right now and i understand the parties like the eff they are just expressing their frustrations and for some for some reason some, sometimes they are right because that's how people feel because when they have something to raise up and the anc just wants people to just look the other way and they can't look the other way then it becomes a problem the same with the da if the da wants to ignore something and the anc wants to confront it then Oh, is is that how the, the the parliament was is supposed to work guys if you are older than me please tell me is that how the parliament is supposed to work like was the maybe let's say the apartheid government was the apartheid government like this in parliament how different are they from us in parliament order in perspective in terms of what we're dealing with i don't need the protection for now We'll let you know if we do need the protection. <laughs> We're encouraged by, by young people from universities and universities of technology. We are already operating on the clarion call that 2024 will be on 1994. So young people in all the universities in different communities, in what, in what level, in commerce. In fact, in terms so where the commander-in-chief is speaking today, in what 17 in developing the young people, their generation is saying that 2024 is going to be our 1994. We're going to liberate our people far much more emphatically. Not the clownish things that have been happening since 1994. Now, we have, as the EFF, not been participating in an activity where the sole director of Ntabanyoni estate which owns Palapala Farm appears now because of the report which this parliament rejected. That's what it <laughs> and when <laughs> <laughs> South Africa is a movie, guys. South Africa is a movie. Guys, what do you think about the things that are happening in Palapala? What do you think about what happened in Palapala? Man, in a normal country, the president would be thrown out, man. He would have been forced to resign, man. The whole Palapala scandal, man. Damn. The whole Palapala scandal, man. It's a mess. And we've treated it like a joke. But if you really think about it, man, just imagine, man, millions and millions were found there. And SARS doesn't even know anything about that money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the whole Palapala thing, guys. Report, the independent panel report said that the prima facie evidence that Mr. Sarah Ramaphosa may have committed a, a one a serious violation of Section 962A of the Constitution, a serious violation of Section 341 of And guys, do you think that the, the Palapala was handled like in Kansa? I feel like every president has his own scandal, but this whole Palapala thing was treated different from from Kansa, man. I mean, like, sometimes I think about, just imagine if this whole thing was done by Jacob Zuma. Man, the South African media would have killed him. The South African media would have killed Jacob Zuma, man. 
the Prevention of Corruption Act that he might have committed a serious misconduct in that he violated possibly Section 96.2b of the, of the Constitution by acting in a way that is inconsistent with his office. A serious misconduct in that the President violated Section 96.2b of the Constitution by exposing himself to a situation involving conflict between the official responsibilities and his private business. That report, which is not challenged nowadays, no counter perspective about that report. There is not even an intention to invalidate it. It says that as the panel, they, they, they view that they, there was a, a, a deliberate purpose to not report the crime and to establish as to just what happened in Palapan. And that there was a deliberate intention not to investigate the commission of those crimes. And that the request of the Namibian police to handle the matter with discretion confirms this intention. That the president abused his position as head of state to have the matter investigated and seeking the assistance of the Namibian president to apprehend a suspect. And that, that report, which is not disputed by anyone, says that there was more foreign currency concealed in the sofa, hmm. more than the amount reflected in the acknowledgement of receipt. Speaker, we have written to you already that let us get a proper inquiry. Let us deal with this. Let's come. When I heard people saying that there were millions found in a couch, I thought about that story of Pablo Escobar actually putting one million dollars in his in his mother's couch, man. I thought about that whole thing. If you have watched this Narcos series on on, on, Net, on Netflix, you can watch. Man, there's a there's a time where Pablo Escobar put one million dollars in his mother's couch, and to think that these people are doing these things in real life, these people are living in a movie, man. They are living in a movie. So much money being like just laying there. So where the where does this money come from? under the sofa forever. <laughs> Let us deal with it. Also, you're not going to be in office forever. Hmm. It will be, it will be, just confront your sins and demons now. So that we deal, this issue of Palapala Pala is not going to disappear. We are still here. So, so we must have to then deal with all of these issues in a much more uh, comprehensive and clear way. You know, guys, recently I was, I, I, I'm busy doing these interviews. I'm trying to do these political interviews that I'm, I'm going to upload from next week. And there, were, there was an, in, there's an interview that I did with, with one of my friends. And, 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 and what he said was really interesting, man. He said that Ramaphosa must watch out. If things don't go his way he must watch out because the ANC is going to do to him what they did to Zuma and what they did to Mbeki so do you think that at some point the ANC will turn against Ramaphosa and this whole bar and this whole Palapala scandal will come and bite him Do you think that one day the ANC will turn on Ramaphosa? Because if the ANC have turned against Mbeki, they've turned against Zuma, how is he going to be different? Will he even finish his own term? <laughs> I thought that was very interesting. And when Floyd, and when Flesh, when Floyd talks about the issue of Palapala Pala not going anywhere, I'm like, maybe this is one issue that is going to take down Ramaphosa. Because I don't believe that he, I I don't think he, he knew that how how big this how how big of an issue this would be. I don't think he he, he understood how big this thing would be, but it it, it, it can't get away, man. People 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 seems can like it can't get away. It can't get away. It's one it's one issue that is that is sticking over his head. Just like with Malema, you see with Malema, you see what the media did with Malema. Man, the, the media did some damage with Malema when, with that VBS scandal thing. Ah, they did a number on man on Malema, man. The media did a number on Malema. Man. 
because right now or every time when the vbs is is spoken about the first name that people are, are talking about is Julius Malem. Your interventions thus far, despite you like applauding each other, patronizing each other about electricity, you still have not come with a believable and clear plan, all of you, in terms of uh, what should happen. When we debated Sona, we said that the immediate solution which you rejected then was to plug in the the floating storage uh, gasification units and power stations that of course are powered by that and we then said that the delays in plugging in the floating power stations is because there's no conclusion on the negotiations for bribes i hear now that you are going to plug <laughs> that because the person who owns 20 houses got no exposure the car power ship deal that is going to bring the 1250 key uh, megawatts into uh, south africa and we know we know we know we know who that who that is in the beginning of this year we as the leadership of the eff went to mozambique to meet with electricity at the mozambique which is the equivalent of escom in uh, mozambique to engage about the surplus energy which Mozambique has. We see that now recently the minister went there after we had, had engaged and enhanced discussions because already we're going to utilize the power purchasing agreement power which we have as the members of the mayoral committee in the city of Ekorulin. And now recently in the Nelson Mandela Bay, we're going to utilize that purchasing power to bring in the surplus electricity from Mozambique, but also invest in other strategic sectors of what should happen. And without just theorizing, we met with Rosa Tom from the Russian Federation to talk about the nuclear option, because as part of the long-term interventions, we need to commission not less than 6,000 megawatts of nuclear energy, which must be plugged into the grid, because ourselves will speak long-term because we know that even in 30 years' time, we're going to be in charge of this country. And we want an industrialized economy that has got full electricity in terms of uh, what happens. We have been in engagement with all the strategic role players, including the people who are exposed to ESCOM. So the solutions, uh, ministers put, the dancing minister, the, our, our our solutions extend to even the technical and mechanical capacity to resolve what are the current crises in ESCO, in all the units and all the power stations. We do not, of course, have political power currently. But if we were to take political power tomorrow, we will take sound and proper political decisions that are going to restore energy and electricity in South Africa. Because we are not under an illusion, none whatsoever, that you can solve South Africa's problems when we are diverting from coal. Coal is the only dependable source currently of energy, of course, with nuclear. Solar PVs are not an on-grid solution. You must <laughs> get that into your head. Over, they don't teach that in civil engineering, <laughs> which you are aware of. But solar and wind. There's not a single renewable energy source in South Africa which has got an energy availability factor above 30%. Not a single pop. All these grids, all these big windows that you have been signing of solar, they, they are not giving electricity. You are just distributing money of ESCOM to them. We have to purposefully revive all the and guys how, how do you feel about this whole green energy thing man i feel like sometimes this whole green energy thing mixed with the whole climate climate change thing man i feel like this whole thing it's a f like man this whole thing is fake man it's fake i don't even want to talk about those people who talk about climate change who are promoting this energy this green energy nonsense who are promoting these solars and, and everything nonsense i mean like right now if you look at africa we don't have time to even 
be looking at this green e green energy nonsense man africa still has to develop itself man we can't ev- we can't even we can't develop ourselves without the coals and the uh, and the oil and and all these things that people are talking against we can now start talking about the electric cars the the the, the solar systems and everything we can't talk about that africa right now we are not at the space to talk to even talk about that I mean, like, if you look at these guys who are talking about climate change, who are promoting these solars, man, these guys are hypocrites. These guys, they go to these conferences where they're going to talk about climate change. A lot of these guys, they are multimillionaires. Some of these guys are billionaires. They are flying there in private jets and they want to lecture us about climate change. I mean, like, if you can go, like, how many, how many planes do they need? To fill up that that arena that is going to host the, maybe the the the, the 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 global the global warming nonsense or the the, the 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 clean energy nonsense. How many private jets are used to fill that arena up? How many? How many? It's nonsense. These people like they make like they don't make any sense. Right now in South Africa, we, like there's no time to even look at this stuff. We have to look at coal. And the fact that our government was somehow agreeing to this whole thing of of of, of solar of of green energy, these things are not going to work for us, man. We have to start being honest with ourselves. These whole things are not going to work for us. Which which company do you know that is powered by 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 a solar plant? And I find it crazy that the countries that are encouraging South Africa to move away from coal, they are buying coal like nobody's business. Even right now in Germany, they are depending on coal to, to, to light up their country. But they have people going all across the world telling people about green energy. I mean, like, if guys, you have, to, if, if, if you if you are believing so much in green energy, why don't you get rid of these fossil fuels and, and, start, and start implementing them? Because they know it can work. I know it can work. I mean, like, some of these policies that the West and... and, 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 and and, uh, uh, and, these, and these global leaders come with men. They make no sense to us as Africans. And for us to be expected to, 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 to listen to that man, I find it very useless, man. I find it very useless. These demands that are being made on Africa right now, I find it very useless, man. If Africa has to go green, man, Africa will never be developed. Africa will never be developed. That's what I'm saying. Why why are these countries, countries like UK, countries like Britain, Britain and and Germany and America and all these countries, they talk about climate change, they talk about we, we this is the, we, we only have twelve years with this planet and all that nonsense. But they're still using coal, they're still using all these other forms of of of, of, of getting energy. But when they go out there they wanna preach about green energy. Man, this green energy will never work for us will never work for us that's why you can't go to china and start talking about no you need all no in china yes they are implementing some of these things but slowly 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 we can't man we can't this whole green energy thing it it annoys me because even the people who are pushing it are hypocrites the whole thing doesn't make sense units the the more than fifty thousand megawatts that are going to be coming from escom must be revived into full operation then we'll have electricity not these games that we are doing of talking english every day when there's no clear perspective of what uh, <laughs> is going to happen we are the only party that is going to restore stability in this country everything else that is happening under this administration points the negative. The levels of unemployment is the highest. For the first time in South Africa, the labor force, more than 50% of the labor force of people who are capable of working are not working. So they, they fall in the categories of unemployed, unemployable, discouraged work seekers, but also those who are not in education and training. So of the 30 or 30.1 million people in that labor force component, you have got more than 16 million that are not, not doing anything. But, and, and you still have people who come and applaud a president. No president, everything else is fine. And you have got a chief whip who just talks as if there's nothing wrong. 
and you guys give her the highest applause for 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 for, for praising absolute rubbish. <laughs> what nonsense is this? For praising mediocrity, man. <laughs> what are we dealing with here? What are we dealing with? What are we dealing with in this country? There are so many things like how do you have more than six thousand people killed in three months? We are competing with the conflict in the necessary intervention in the Ukraine and Russia situation. Because of the, the, the murder cases, without a clear plan that is coming from this government. I was supposed to leave the six minutes for you in national chain. Now it's 2.3 minutes. Please come and respond to them because I know some of them are going to go via off. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so guys what do you think about that and what do you think about where the country is right now and where do you think the country is going do you believe that right now in south africa we are headed to a right this we are headed to a right direction or or what because when you look at some of these things that are happening right now in south africa man some of these things some of these things are scary man some of these things are scary if you look at crime the crime levels are so up People are being killed left, right, and center, man. And we are so desensitized to this. Like, it's, it's, it's almost as if it's nothing. You check how many people are killed in a day. You check how many women are being raped. You check how many kids are being molested and abused. The numbers are up. You look at unemployment. The kids, like, the youth is, is, is like, the youth is at home doing nothing. You can go to every township in South Africa. You will find a lot of people at home not doing anything. And when those people start using drugs, the same people who the same people who are supposed to care for these people are the first ones who are going to go out there and condemn them. Man, man, man unemployment is the most painful thing that one person can go through. I know a lot of people who are unemployed right now. Some of these people they feel very useless. Some are even taking their lives. You can see when people talk there. You can see when people post these things online. And when they have these conversations online about how painful it is to be qualified. But now you are not even working. And you, you almost feel like you are a burden to your own family. People are no longer respecting you. Man, unemployment, unemployment is painful. Unemployment is painful. A lot of South African youth, man, a lot of youth, we are pained with this whole thing of unemployment. That's why I always say, like, if you have something going on for you, if you are working, make sure that you are, make sure that you are, you, you are holding in tight because things are bad outside. Don't let anybody tell you all these things. Things are bad outside. You look at teenage pregnancy. You look at what's been happening in our townships. So guys, if you if you were to sit down and actually analyze what's happening in South Africa, what would you say is happening right now in South Africa? Do you think the country is going in the right direction? Do you think like even the politics are going to save us like do you think like there's going to be a time where south african public actually take accountability for some of the things that are happening right now because sometimes i feel like as people we tend to blame politicians for everything that has been happening in our lives but we don't even want to take small accountability for some of the things that are happening and some or some of the things that we've allowed to happen are we ever going to take any small accountability for some of the things that are happening right now because by the fact that we have people in power who are, who are not doing anything for us but year in year out we, are, we keep voting these people in year in year out year in year out people are complaining about how bad things are but when it comes to election season young people are not voting but right now, young people are the ones that are hurting the most. Like, every time when I hear young people talk, young people are not even interested in politics as a whole. They see politics as a waste of time. But a, one, a, a, a wise man once said that if you, if, if you don't take part in politics, you are going to be led by a fool. 
Young people don't want to take part in politics. They are not interested in what's been happening. And I can't blame them because some of these guys, they just want to provide for their families. They don't want to be involved with nonsense. But at the same time, this is one thing that we have to be involved in. We have to know what people are advocating for. We have to know the policies that have been pushed. We need to know how these policies are going to affect us as young people. Because some of these people in parliament, they are talking about Vision 2070. Where will they be in Vision 2070? So if we are going to allow old people right now to implement their Vision 2070, like how, 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 how are, are they even going to be held accountable? Maybe let's say the whole Vision 2070 thing doesn't come to fruition. Who's going to hold them accountable? These people will never be here. It will be us. So that's why I find it like, it doesn't make sense to me when a young person is not taking part in politics. I'm like, what, what the hell do you expect? I'm not saying go out there and be a, a member of parliament or be a councillor or what, but you have to know things that are happening in the country. You have to be interested in what's been happening with your country. You can't tell me that you see that the bread, the, the bread price has gone up, but you're not even interested to know what caused that. But you just want to complain year in, year out. You don't complain. I mean, like this, if you don't vote, all the people are going are still going to vote for the ANC. They love the ANC. There's nothing that we can do about it. All people have, love ANC. Our grandmothers, they love ANC. Our our elderly in South Africa, they love the ANC. And these people, they don't, they don't mind going out there and vote. Old people, they don't mind sitting there for like five hours before they cast in their votes. But you will never see young people going out there to stand there and vote. So in 2024, if you are a young person, you need to go out there and vote. You need to go out there and vote. Or if you have a young person in the house, tell them to go out there and vote. Their life literally depends on that vote. Because if they don't vote, guess what? The same thing that has been happening for the past five years is going to happen again. And things are going to be much worse because there will be more people unemployed. A lot of people will be killing themselves. Depression will be running amok in our communities. Young people right now are using drugs. Some of them, they are having babies left, right, and centers. Some of them, they are drunkards. They don't have a purpose in life. Even some of the most qualified, they end up using drugs in, the, in, in our townships. So as young people, at, 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 when, when will we, we, we wake up and actually participate? Because if we don't, we don't have anyone else to blame. Because we know that our old people, like our, our, our grandparents and our parents, to such an extent, they don't vote because they don't vote with that thought of like, okay, I'm trying to fix things here. They just vote with the ANC. Because the ANC liberated them from the apartheid government. Like, that's what they vote for. They voting for Nelson Mandela. But, but right now, it's our struggle as young people. This is our struggle right now. Our, 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 our parents and our grandparents, they were faced with apartheid. But right now, what's happening right now, this is our struggle. It can't be that we have 60% of unemployed people in South Africa. And we don't feel like that is a struggle. This is our struggle right now as young people. This is our struggle. So are we going to take part or are we going to sit back and complain about everything? Guys, please tell me what you think about that speech. And please don't forget to hit the like button and hit the notification bell so that you can get notifications whenever I drop new content. My name is Thomas Mabaso and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.